Good morning, and welcome to our service of Thanksgiving. I'm the Reverend Joanne Tatro at St. John's Episcopal Church in Ellicott City. We are coming to you from Resurrection Chapel. I'm so glad that we have this time together on this morning to remember God's presence in our lives and to give thanks for all of the blessings of this life. The bulletin for this service is available on St. John's Facebook page in an earlier post by way of a link. So let's begin with our opening hymn. We have a number of hymns that you are welcome to sing along with from home. They are all familiar hymns to you. So um, let's begin with Come Ye Thankful People Come. consecrates life with as much transforming power as our prayer of thanksgiving over the bread and wine at the altar. The embrace
embracing and, expre and expressing of gratitude is the most powerful thing we can do in life. make our hearts ready for this day of thanksgiving by joining together in prayer, word, and song, celebrating as one family the feast that Christ prepares for us. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious Father, we give you thanks for the fruits of the earth in their season and for the labors of those who harvest them. Make us, we pray, faithful stewards of your great bounty for the provision of our necessities and the relief of all who are in need. To the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Join us in reading a portion of Psalm 100, as printed in the bulletin. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age.
A reading from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. The point is this. The one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and the one who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each of you give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance, so that by always having enough of everything, you may share abundantly in every good work. As it is written, he scatters abroad, he gives to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way for your great generosity, which will produce thanksgiving to God through us. For the rendering of this ministry not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also overflows with many thanksgivings to God. Through the testing of this ministry, you glorify God by your obedience to the confession of the gospel of Christ and by the generosity of your sharing with them and with all others while they long for you and pray for you because of the surpassing grace of God that he has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Now we turn our thoughts to the creator or great spirit and send greetings and thanks for the gifts of creation. Everything we need to live a good life is here on this Mother Earth. For all the love that is still around us, we gather our minds together as one and send our choicest words of greetings and thanks to the Creator. Now let us hear the St. John's Episcopal Adult Choir singing My Shepherd Will Supply My my lead, which is on page M3 of the bulletin.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Lord Christ. Christ. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean, but the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God, except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Lord Christ. Christ. In the name of our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. Amen. Yesterday's newspaper told the tale clearly. It is a different year, said one headline. And it went on to tell the story of families who are pitching party tents in their backyards for their outdoor turkey dinners. Another headline read, Counting Simple Gifts in a Tough Year. Yet another, Finding Things to be Grateful for in a Thankless Pandemic, and so on. One columnist didn't mince words, saying, Expressing gratitude seems like a contradiction in a year that many speak of profanely. This day set aside for counting our blessings normally means folks packed into the dining room, extra chairs brought out, along with extra hugs and some extra laughs, shared with those that we may only see on this day. This day means extended families, extended tables, extended conversations, meals, board games, football. Yet, it is indeed a different year. We now stand on the threshold of many unknowns as we usher in the winter months, as we look ahead to a change in our national leadership. We grow increasingly weary of a pandemic, even as we must be increasingly vigilant as we enter the season of waiting and expectation of Advent. But mainly what is different is the separation, the space between us that is antithetical to this day of gathering, of holding, and blessing. And so I pray that we will pay particular and reverent attention to the space that now exists between us. We each have the gift to affect and shape those spaces between us and our loved ones, to make our relationships holy and blessed, even as we find ourselves physically apart. We, each one of us, can bless the space between us. To bless the space between us is the title of a book of blessings by the late Irish poet and priest, John O'Donohue. And this morning I'd like to share with you some excerpts from this book with the hope that you will hear in his words the gift to make holy 
all of the spaces between us today and bless the threshold that we stand on. John O'Donoghue. Some of the most powerful thresholds divide worlds from each other. Life in the womb, from birth, childhood from adolescence, adulthood from middle age, old age from death. And on each side, there is a different geography of feeling and thinking and being. Crossing a threshold is, in effect, a rite of passage. Yet our culture has little to offer these crossings. We seem to have progressed to become experts in so many things, multiplying and acquiring stuff we neither need nor truly want. Yet without recognizing and celebrating and negotiating well these vital thresholds in our lives, they pass by undistinguished from the daily rituals of life. This is where we need to retrieve and reawaken our capacity for blessing. And what is blessing but a circle of light drawn around each of us to protect, heal, and strengthen us? While we live in this world, we always live in distance from one another. Often the greatest distance is not physical, but mental. The beauty of blessing is that it recognizes no barriers and no distances. All of the frontiers and spaces that separate us, the vital thresholds of life, can be crossed by the lovely subtlety of blessing. To acknowledge and cross a new threshold is always a challenge. It demands courage and also a sense of trust in whatever is emerging. This becomes essential when a threshold opens suddenly in front of you, one for which you had little preparation. Although we know each other's names, we recognize each other's faces, we never know what destiny shapes each of our lives. That we are simply here is an affirmation that somehow life needed and wanted us to be, as we are, right here and now. This primeval acceptance can open a vast spring of trust. It can free us into a natural courage that casts out fear and opens up our lives to become voyages of discovery, creativity, and compassion. No threshold need be a threat, but an invitation and a promise. Whatever comes, the great sacrament of life will remain faithful to us, blessing us always with visible signs of grace. We merely need to trust and bless the space between us. May it be a light to protect and heal and strengthen us. May it be full of hope, ever sacred and sweet. Amen. A litany of thanksgiving. Let us read responsively. Let us give thanks to God, our Creator, for all the gifts so freely bestowed upon us, for the beauty and wonder of your creation in earth and sky and sea. We thank, thank you, Lord. 
for all that is gracious in the lives of men and women revealing the image of Christ. We, we thank, thank you, Lord. Lord, for our food, for daily food and drink, our homes and families and our friends. We, we thank, thank you, Lord. Lord, for minds to think and hearts to love and hands to serve. We thank you, Lord, for teachers, service workers, health care practitioners, homeschooling parents, and others whose toil enriches our lives. We thank you, Lord, for all valiant seekers for us after truth, liberty, and justice. We thank you, Lord, for the brave and courageous, for the lonely and isolated. For all those who are patient in suffering and faithful in adversity. We, we thank, thank you, Lord. Lord. For the communion of saints in all times and places. We, we thank, thank you, Lord. For those who have departed this life and the blessing of their memory. We, we thank, thank you, Lord. For all those blessings which we now name silently or aloud. And for all the blessings we have yet to recognize. We, we thank, thank you, Lord. Lord. Above all, we give you thanks for the great mercies and promises given to us in Christ Jesus, our Lord. To, to him, him be praise, praise and, and glory. glory. With, with you and the Holy Spirit, Spirit now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. My friends, may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, and also with, you. with you. Now as we enjoy our offertory hymn, All People That on Earth Do Dwell, please consider an offering which will be designated for the Howard County Food Bank. We appreciate your generosity. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Because you gave Jesus Christ, your only Son, to be born for us, who by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit, was made perfect man of the flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother, so that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power to become your children. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord. God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious God, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin 
and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and creator of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will, will come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O God, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with St. John and all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Behold what you are. May we become what we receive. Let us pray together the prayer of spiritual communion. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. I remember your death, Lord Christ. I proclaim your resurrection. I await your coming in glory. And since I cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you, and you in me, in this life, and in the life to come. Amen. I invite you to join me after the service until noon today to receive Holy Communion in front of the Parish Life Center.
And now let us pray our post-communion prayer, saying together, Loving, Loving God, God, we give, give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth a people forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. This day, may you know this blessing that gathers you in and sends you forth, but will not forget you. O oh, hear us, as this day we say grace, this day we say grateful, this day we say blessing, this day we release you in God's keeping and hold you in gladness and love, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, protect, heal, and strengthen you this day and always. Amen. go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. A blessed and happy Thanksgiving to one and all.